All right, this is section 16.3, um, Darwin presenting his case about natural selection. So after reading Malthus, um, the economist, um, where he was talking about um, population growth in the human population, um, Darwin realized that if more individuals are produced than can survive, uh, members of a population must compete to obtain food, living space, and other limited um, necessities of life. So Darwin described this as the struggle for existence. Um, so this led to him thinking about variation and adaptation. So Darwin knew that individuals have natural variations among their heritable traits. So like different eye colors, obviously different hair color, different um, heights, things like that. And he hypothesized that some of those variants are better suited to life in their environments than others. So any heritable characteristic that not only increases an organism's ability to survive and reproduce in its environment is called an adaptation. So anything that helps something survive um, long enough to reproduce um, is an adaptation. So various adaptation examples here. Um, adaptations can involve body parts or structures like a tiger's claws, colors, um, like those that make camouflage or mimicry possible, or physiological functions like the way a plant carries out photosynthesis. So some examples here. Um, the scarlet king snake exhibits mimicry, which we'll talk about in animal behavior, but that's an adaptation in which an organism copies or mimics a more dangerous organism. Although the scarlet king snake is harmless itself, it looks like the poisonous eastern coral snake, so predators avoid it. So this uh, mimicry adaptation allows the scarlet king snake to survive longer, so therefore have more of a chance to reproduce and reproduce more. A scorpion fish's coloring is an example of camouflage. So again, that's an adaptation that allows an organism to blend in its background and avoid predation. So again, this allows the um, scorpion fish to survive longer and therefore reproduce. So everything's about being able to survive and reproduce as much as possible. Um, many adaptations also involve behaviors such as the complex avoidance strategies prey species use, again, surviving and reproducing. Um, for example, a crane will display defensive behavior in an effort to scare off um, a fox. So according to Darwin, differences in adaptations affect an individual's fitness. So when we talk about fitness, we don't mean like how strong or how fast you can run. Fitness describes how well an organism can survive and reproduce in its environment. The key two things here are surviving and reproducing. Individuals with adaptations that are well suited to their environment can survive and reproduce are said to have a high fitness. Individuals with characteristics that are not well suited to their environment either die without reproducing or leave very few offspring are said to have low fitness. So this difference in rates of survival and reproduction is known as survival of the fittest. That's what that whole term means, survival of the fittest. Survival of those that can um, reproduce a lot and survive longer. Um, in evolutionary terms, survival means reproducing and passing adaptations onto the next generation. Um, this leads into natural selection. So Nar Darwin named his mechanism for evolution natural selection because of its similarities he saw to artificial selection, which again is done by humans selecting for desirable traits like milk production and cows. Natural selection is the process by which organisms with variations most suited to their local environment survive and leave more offspring. So in natural selection, the environment, not a farmer or animal breeder, influences the fitness. So that's why it's called natural selection. Um, Well-adapted individuals for a certain environment will survive and reproduce. So from generation to generation, um, populations continue to change as they become better adapted or as their environment changes. So natural selection acts only on inherited traits because those are the only characteristics that parents can pass on to their offspring. So for example here, um, guy, maybe a young adult male making a really bad decision might not survive this. So maybe the, um, the trait of having really bad um, decision making skills might not pass on. So that's natural selection working right there. Um, so case in point with natural selection here, um, let's look at this hypothetical population of grasshoppers that changes over time as a result of natural selection. So grasshoppers can lay more than 200 eggs at a time, but only a small fraction of those offspring survive to reproduce. So a lot of times you'll see an overproduction of 
um, babies, and then only because only some of them will survive. So that's the struggle for existence. Certain variations called adaptations increase an individual's chances of surviving and reproducing. So in this population of grasshoppers, heritable variation include yellow and green body color. So you can see the yellow and green um, grasshoppers here. Green color is an adaptation. The green grasshoppers blend into their environment, into the green grass, so they are less, they are less visible to their predators. Because their color serves as a camouflage adaptation, green grasshoppers have a higher fitness and so survive and reproduce more often than the yellow grasshoppers because here the bird is enjoying eating the yellow grasshoppers because they stand out while the green ones kind of blend in more so they're able to survive longer and therefore reproduce and pass on those green genes. So the green grasshoppers become more common than yellow grasshoppers in this population over time because more grasshoppers are born than can survive. Um, individuals vary in color and color is a heritable trait and green grasshoppers have higher fitness in this particular environment because they blend into their background. So natural selection does not make an organism like quote unquote better. Um, adaptations don't have to be perfect, they just have to be good enough to enable an organism to pass its genes to the next generation. So anything that's just going to allow something to again um, live long enough to reproduce as much as possible, that is a good adaptation. Um, doesn't have to be um, considered great compared to other organisms, as long as that um, organism or species can reproduce a lot, then that's going to be an adaptation. Um, natural selection also doesn't move in a fixed direction. There is no one or perfect way of doing something. Natural selection is simply a process that enables organisms to survive and reproduce in a local environment. So for example, many different styles of pollination have evolved among flowering plants. For example, oak tree flowers are pollinated by the wind, while apple tree flowers are pollinated by insects. Both kinds of pollination work well enough for these plants to, to survive and reproduce in their environments. So both of those styles enabled pollination. So it's not one is necessarily better than the other. Um, they both really work well in their particular environments. So that is a good adaptation. So if local uh, environment, environmental cha um, conditions change, some traits that were once adap adaptive may no longer be useful and different traits may become adaptive. So if environmental conditions change faster than a species can adapt to those changes, the species may become extinct. We're kind of seeing this with humans not becoming extinct necessarily, but with the idea of um, food being kind of more readily available for certain cultures. So we have an obesity epidemic here in North America um, when maybe you're looking at different tribal areas where food is not as common, um, they don't have an epidemic of obesity and like type 2 diabetes, other related things with obesity. Um, so our environment is changing much faster than our human species. So we've been kind of accustomed to, um, as a human species, to kind of hold on to every sort of calorie that we get. Um, so that's why it's really easy to kind of gain fat, a little harder to lose it. So our environment we're seeing is changing much more faster than our um, species is changing um, to combat the um, high cal caloric intake that we have now. Uh, okay, now looking at common descent, natural selection depends on the ability of organisms to reproduce and leave descendants. Every organism alive today is descended from parents who survived and reproduced and so forth. Um, just as well adapted individuals in a species survive and reproduce, well adapted species survive over time. So Darwin proposed that over many generations, adaptation could cause successful species to evolve into new species. He also proposed that living species are descended with modification from common ancestors. So this is an idea called descent with modification. You kind of saw that with cladograms. Um, according to the principle of common descent, all species, living and extinct, are descended from ancient common ancestors. So this aspect of Darwin's theory implies that life has been on Earth for a very long time, enough time for all this descent with modification to occur. So this again goes back to Hunton and Lyle, those um, other two scientists we saw in the previous section. Um, this kind of goes back to their contribution to Darwin's theory um, about having deep, you know, having deep time that gave enough time for natural selection to act. So for evidence of descent with modification over long periods of time, Darwin po um, pointed to the fossil record. 
Darwin based his explanation for the diversity of life on the idea that species change over time. This, um, this actually page here on the right is from one of Darwin's first notebooks, um, kind of looking at an evolutionary tree that he drew. Um, the sketch shows Darwin's explanation for how descent with modification could produce the diversity of life. Um, so it's kind of like a bunch of cladograms all together. So a single tree of life links all living things with because of this um, descent with modification coming from a common ancestor or ancestors. Okay, that is it. Thank you.